Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. 12 o'clock location, we've got Ro again, starting as the, or Reg, Rogi. Starting as the brown Terran bottom right corner, we have Keen starting as the red Zerg. Game one, honestly, it felt like there were portions where, I don't know if Keen was just trying to showboat and wanted to like try to just win the game heads up, because he built a massive amount of Mutalisks. Huge investment there, but was still very much ahead in the mid game. But not having sufficient defenses at exterior bases ended up costing him uh, the match overall. So Ro showing that he can uh, pull it out. And honestly, Keen's no slouch. I think Keen is solid B, sometimes peeks into A. Game two, game so game one going to Ro. Thank you for the raid, Mullet. On the Twitch side. By the way, this is going to go out to Twitch and YouTube land once again. If you do not follow 80s Mullet, you probably should. Everybody's... The people's Terran. Everybody's favorite Swedish streamer. Everybody's favorite Swedish streamer. Doesn't matter. You could go up to... Uh, you could just find Bruce Willis on the street, and even though he's been having issues with, like, audio... Whatever. You'd be like, who's your favorite Swedish streamer? He'd be like, I don't even know what Twitch is, but damn it, it's 80s Mullet. That's what would happen right there. Keen going to once again open up with a 12th hatch. I really like that. I'm hoping Keen does the same thing he did last match where he fields a little more Zerglings in the mid game to put his opponent in the dark. Because, uh, yeah, I feel like that really... That was the only thing I think... I, I think that was one of the things that was really holding him back when I saw his host, uh, Hustle League matches. So seeing him do it here, I think, has uh, been really, really solid. Now, I think, even in game one... Massively ahead, just kind of... It's like small things, you know? It's really, really small things. Which is why I could see him, like, really surging ahead and uh, entering the upper echelon and not too long from now. SCV getting first scout, going to find the extractor and the spawning pool, also the 12th hatch. Gonna attack that spawning pool. How do you even do that? It's like a big mass of, like, veins and stuff, right? Like, what would you even know to attack there? Looks like in response, Ro once again going to go Rax straight into expansion. We'll see if he goes for the Academy. The two Rax Academy build once again, the bread and butter of Terran versus Zerg. Pretty much the... If I was going to say it's like the standard build, I feel like that is the flat-out standard build. <clears throat> but, yeah. Supply dupe on the front to create a little bit. That's an interesting location, actually. Usually you'll see it a little bit more forward to provide a bit more of a blockade, putting it a little closer to the command center, maybe to use the command center as a run point, just in case Keen was going to field a large amount of Zerglings and get aggressive. Getting some initial attack damage is sending one Zergling out, maybe to go for... Well, actually, doesn't need to scout with it, because the Overlord has found that natural expansion and realizes that command center's building. So six Zerglings now, going to make their way out. The single Zergling that's left behind actually getting really good damage on this SCV. So, SCV down, five Zerglings sprinting towards the front, a bunker in construction. I don't know that that bunker is going to be in time before the Zerglings arrive. But it looks like Keen doesn't like what he sees, so he's just going to go ahead and back out. Natural expansion up and running, starting to saturate that. Immediate tech to layer. So, I'm expecting Keen to, again, go the two hatch, spire, tech on that third. As a bit of an afterthought. <clears throat> SCV. Oh, okay. I see it now. So just going for the, the more horizontal rather than the vertical. Or I should say the more like slashing blockade rather than the, the straight uh, horizontal blockade. Zerglings grouping up on the front to deny additional SCVs wandering out. Ro finding a gap. Come on, lazy Zerglings. Yeah, able to do some damage there. That does at least... Well... Let them know how many Zerglings are out on the front. A second one trying to make its way back. Drone now going to go ahead and plant the hatchery here. Bottom left, we do have the layer already up. Spire at the natural expansion. And second gas. I'm wondering if Keen's going to go... So with that second gas, I wonder if Keen's going to go heavy mutalisks once again. To be honest, I felt like in game one, he had... Sufficient enough Mutalisks where he might have even been able to go later with the uh, Lurkers. 
on the defense, but we'll see. Might even even, yeah. Might have just been a spot. Yeah, even go a little bit later on that. Spire coming online. Zerglings have done a great job, though, of keeping Ro completely in the dark. He, in the meantime, has gone the Rax Academy. Throwing out double comsat. Confirms that that Spire is being constructed. Engineering Bay, or is finished constructed. Engineering Bay being built. Mulus on the way, and actually the Engineering Bay might be a little bit late here. And I think, realizing that potentiality, Ro going to press the front a little bit. So with the original Two Racks Academy with Stim and whatnot, ooh, a Marine getting picked off, that doesn't help efforts. It was originally there so you could put pressure and force some Sunken Colonies on the front against the Three Hatch. It was kind of its original form. So turrets being built here, but these are the turrets I'm worried about. These turrets in the... So if Keen makes a beeline, looks like it's not going to... It's not to be, however... Yeah, turret's going to complete. However, Keen abusing that gap in between. Getting some nice kills, really thinning out the herd. Beautiful micromanagement there from Keen. Regrouping his mutalisks. Actually going to pull one out so it can go ahead and regenerate. More mutalisks being produced. Is he going to go for the plus one? Uh, where is it? Plus one weapons once again. Yeah, plus one about halfway finished, so really wants to try to abuse plus one weapons mutilist play. He's got that base up in the upper left-hand corner. It hasn't got that gas constructed as of yet. A little bit of a miss micro. Able to pick off a critical medic and an SCV that was in transfer there. So here are finding gaps in Rose's defensive lines. Ro, in the meantime, hasn't started plus one weapons. Really has minimal marines. I actually thought there was some Zerglings potentially going to go for a bust because he's got two fire bats. Drop Compsat at the main. I'm not sure what information that's really going to help him with, though, aside from seeing drone saturation. Armory placing at the natural expansion, but right now, Ro just does not have a lot of anti-air. More Mutalists grouping up, and I think Keen going to try to do similar play, allow... Now that he's got nine Mutalists, you can usually, yeah, just two-shot those tourists with decent micro, especially once plus one weapons... That plus plus one weapons, you can just shred through turrets. More medics getting picked off. So Keen just showing... Yeah, he's putting on a show now. Really controlling this match. It would be lit if you could get firebats to... Like, that would just be unfair. If firebats could shoot air and do splash damage. Like mini archons. When you think about it, an archon and a firebat are basically the same unit, right? Turret getting wiped out. Second turret trying to be built. Now, a bunch of turrets back here, but Keen still has an angle to pick off units as they're produced. And also, no defense along that right-hand side. SCV's getting wiped out. Rose still up on the worker count, but things looking a little bit grim. Third gas is running. An additional hatchery, four hatcheries, going to be planted for Keen. So it looks like maybe he wants to do it on layer tech rather than bo uh, bothering to make his way up to additional tech. Now pushing that front. So those fire bats are going to come in use, but his troop count has been so hindered. Because right now Keen has a huge supply lead, which you usually don't see at a Zerg at this point of the match. Just really dominating things. Let's see if he goes for that two control group Jadong style play with those Mutalists once again. Now, these turrets look for... Oh, we added a Valkyrie as well. These turrets look formidable. wonder if some Scourge are going to get added on. That is a mass amount of Mutalists. Yeah, Keen just wants to go all Mutalists all day. Punishing there the Valkyrie taking some damage. But still alive. They're so beefy. More Overlords grouping up. More Mutalists joining in. So, yeah, Keen just going to try to roll... Row over with straight up Mutalist play, and honestly, I think he's going to do it this time. All of the SCVs hugging that mineral line. Two turrets, the Marines taking a while to get here, but even with this grouping of Marines, it's almost a. Yeah, the Mules can just engage. They don't even need to micro here. There's enough Mutalists where they outnumber the Medic Marine here. They can just pummel everything that's left. More troops making their way up. Zerglings, some Scourge joining just to deal with those Valkyries. 
and Keen just pouring on the pressure. I don't think Bro can keep up. He doesn't have plus one weapons yet. Plus one weapons a ways off. The Scourge boxing out those Valkyries. The Medic Marine front. What was left of it getting obliterated. And now that natural expansion completely breached. Scourge going to push that Valkyrie away. And that is going to be GG. So Keen, I think showing more of what he wanted to accomplish in game one. With just abusive mutilist style play. Now Ro going to be pushed back into his natural expansion. Double supply lead for Keen. Just needs to get more troops up to finish things out. Hasn't made any movements towards Hive whatsoever. Valkyrie count is growing. But I still don't... Yeah, it's not sufficient to deal with everything here. The Zerglings can now go across, deal with the little anti-air that's there in the turrets. Not even counting the Valkyries at this stage. And there is just stuff all over the map. Actually, the Valkyries getting pretty good damage because they weren't getting focus fire. Group repair on that top, but Ro realizing he's completely breached. Going to GG right there. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.